China A shares are not included in the global equity portfolios today. Mm -hmm. They're not included because of one key reason, there's a country classification criteria. China is not classified as an emerging or a developed or a frontier country. The reason being is it has certain amount of restrictions that apply. It has, for its own reasons, on the nature of the market, it has certain restrictions. Say, assume we would include China A shares, which are the stocks traded in Shenzhen and Shanghai today. Assume that there are no free float restrictions whatsoever. It will be 40.01 percent weight in our emerging market portfolio. That's the size of it. So, a 100 billion passive product um, that runs out of US today would allocate that, that, that uses FTSE emerging markets if there are no restrictions or any quota restrictions or any free float market restrictions. If you look at it, it will be 40.01 percent. A hundred billion dollar fund at 40.01 percent would be allocated to Shenzhen and Shanghai stocks. That's the size. But given where we are with all nuances and certain level of restrictions for its own reasons, today it is included when we launched last year, it's about 4.83 percent. So if I'm a portfolio manager who has an emerging market portfolio with China Asia is included, the capital mobility restrictions, if my fund is based out of Europe or in the US, I need to have a freedom of mobility of my assets. Right? So there are restrictions in when we can take out the assets, so from one week to a year, depends upon what type of fund structure you have. And secondly, it is the settlement cycle. So the, the Chinese stocks have got T plus zero settlement cycle. So that means you deliver the securities today by 1800 hours and then you get your cash tomorrow by four. So that means in a global portfolio, I sell 5% weight of a China A share and I buy 5% of Brazilian stocks. Well, I deliver the securities, I have no cash. That means I need to fund myself somewhere to buy the Brazilian because the sum of it should be 100% at any given point of time. So FTSE's country classification has got a practitioner committee which are the users and practitioners of emerging markets. So while the policies can change, and how does it work practically? So they would give their comments and feedback how it works. Based on their feedback, we would obviously do the review in September. We would announce to the market and a year later it will get implemented. For that to happen, it needs to be in the watch list. So today, China A shares are included in the FTSE's watch list to be included, potentially to be included in the emerging market portfolio. I mean, based on the market feedback that we have received and our largest investors who use our benchmarks, mm -hmm. um, they would ideally like to know the clarification on the suspensions of the stocks. Mm -hmm. Because as you remember last year, there was a major suspension that took place. Um, so there's, there's got to be a clarification on the suspensions of stocks. Taxation on dividends is very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, while most of those funds are pushed forward and some of them are holding withholding tax today, a clarification on that would be really, really important for them. Um, and, 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 and a clarity on the roadmap of what it holds five years from now, ten years from now. What is CSRC's view on that? They would really would welcome that strategy to be displayed and to say, this is where we intend to go. These are the things that we intend to do. So those those three things are are would, would be very well very much welcomed by the international investors. Our view is that within the next two to three years, China Air shares will be included in the mainstream benchmarks, namely the FTSE emerging markets. The reason why we think there's a high probability of that happening is the amount of of, 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 of changes that the regulators have been making, specifically CSRC has been making, has been very warmly welcomed by the majority of the institutional investors.